We ask that you rush this place, God, with your spirit, God. Because it's not by might, it's not by your power, but it's by your spirit, God. We ask that you send revival in this place, God. We do know that Bible is not a weekly thing, but revival begins in us, God. So, God, we ask that you continue to cover our pastor, God, cover his wife, God, from the crown of their head to the soles of our the soles of their feet, God. Oh, God, we thank you for our founder, God. Cover her, preserve her, and keep her, God. In the name of Jesus, we give our hand of God back to you, God, that we ask that right now that you restore unto him what he's getting ready to pour out unto your people, God. Replenish what he's getting ready to pour out, God. We ask that you cover him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, God. And the people of God say yes. And the people of God say yes. Say yes for your healing and say yes for your deliverance. And Jesus, name we pray. know the way. If you cannot find the way, stop by here. Get the night every day and go. There's Stone Mountain, Georgia. And we'll be ever so careful to point you to Jesus. I heard somebody say that the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. When I, when I heard, I decided that I cannot miss this feast. So I got up and I got here to
Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, put your hands together. Put your feet on the floor. Let the Holy Ghost move you from the pool into the floor. Come on, let's have some church. Come on, go let your name and say, Oh, Say, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to give it glory. Come on, you didn't point at nobody. Tell them I came to give it praise. Come on, tell them God has been good to me. Come on, wave your hand and say, the Lord has been mighty, mighty good to me. I can't praise him enough. Glory to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Yeah. Glory. Somebody ought to put your hands together. Today, 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 today. 
for blessing us right now. God let us be encouraged. Let us be empowered. Let us be enlightened. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. To God it is our prayer that no one leaves out of connection the same way they came. I command you to be healed, be delivered, and be set free. And God, we are praising you right now because we know that you're going to make a way somehow. I pray the Lord we make a way. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. And God, we're praising you right now for the somehow. Some way it will work out. In Jesus' name. God is exalted. The devil is defeated. And we have in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 12. I want you to meet me here. Verse number 11. Faith 
is like Wi-Fi. It's invisible, but it has the power to connect you to what you need. Don't doubt what you're getting ready to see. Would you encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't doubt what you are getting ready to see. It was in 2008, um, the state of Texas became a battleground for a holy war. It occurred in a town called Mount Vernon. And here there is a place in Mount Vernon called Drummond. And Drummond's Bar began construction on a new building to increase their business. So the local Baptist church started a campaign to block the bar from opening with petitions and fasting and praying. They were extremely concerned, watch this, because the bar was growing but the church wasn't. Work progressed right up to the week before the opening and right before the opening of the new bar, lightning struck and burned the bar to the ground. So the church began to clap. The church was cheering until the bar owner sued the church on the grounds that the church was ultimately responsible for the demise of his building. Come closer. The church was sued because they were found to be responsible, watch this, through direct or indirect means. And so the church began to deny all responsibility and any connection to the building's demise in its reply to the court. And as the case made its way into court, the judge looked over all the paperwork. And at the hearing, here's what the judge says. I don't know. How I'm going to decide this, but it appears to me from the paperwork before me, we have a bar owner who believes in the power of prayer and an entire church congregation who doesn't. And ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we claim to have faith, but we don't believe what we're praying for. And woe unto us if non believers believe in prayer more than we do. And many of us have watched a version of Dracula. And in most instances, a vampire goes through the town terrorizing people and sucking the blood out of their necks. But in one version that I watched, the vampire stumbles into a sanctuary and finds a priest. And the priest pulls out his cross. And what I saw was that the vampire began to laugh at the priest. And he says to the priest, it only works if you believe in it. Watch this. And then he proceeds to bite the neck of the priest, draining the blood from him. The one who had the cross but didn't believe in it. 
And I need us right in this moment to have enough faith and conviction that we can say with confidence, I will have victory in my life in the name of Jesus. And you got to believe it with every fiber of your being that some way, somehow, things are going to work out for me. And I'm not just talking about prayer and faith, but I'm talking about the power that is in the cross. And you don't realize how many demonic entities are trying to drain you, that are trying to attack you. It won't work if you don't believe in yourself. But I just believe that there are some people that still believe in the wonder-working power of Jesus. And would you just declare it out loud? It still works. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It still works. It still works. It still works. Ladies and gentlemen, doubt can be intellectual whereby we think about it and after blow after blow setback after setback disappointment after disappointment some would start to doubt if things will ever get better for me. If we're not careful, the enemy will make us doubt ourselves. And slowly, without any warning or a name tag, you look up and you have now become overwhelmed with doubt. How did this happen? Because you have history with God and you still doubt it. So I need some believers who can still hold on to faith and conviction because we can say, you can't make me doubt it. I know too much about him. That's why I love him so much. Because he, come on, help me here, so real to me. And there are a few of us who still know I trust God in spite of the evidence. I love God in, in spite of what I may be dealing with. I refuse to doubt God. Doubt can also be emotional. It can be emotional, um, hear me carefully, because um, it can be emotional, come closer, if you've been cheated on. If you have been lied on or lied to. It's emotional because if you have been betrayed. It's emotional for you because you may have been abused. And so your emotions can go through the full cycle of sorrow and disappointment. You don't know what that feels like, some of you, if somebody close to you has never died. Come close. You, you have no idea what it feels like with a trembling hand that you had to sign divorce papers for somebody who you thought you'd spend the rest of your life with. You don't know what that feels like un until you have been released from a job that, that you have been faithful to. And without warning, you get to let go and they can't even give you a 
reasonable cause. You begin to doubt it. And when you carry that type of baggage, it then goes on to your next flight. So it's hard for you to move forward because in the back of your mind, you are thinking about your last experience. It's hard because you still have the scars. And so your doubts have now become emotional. I'm glad I have your attention. Come closer. Because now you got to figure out do I want to quit this job or do I want to see it through? You, you got to figure out, do I want to make the relationship work or is it not worth it? You got to figure out. Y'all know how we do it at the beginning of the year. Do I cut them off or do I pull them together? That there's a distinct difference between disbelief and doubt. Come closer because disbelief is the decision to not believe. Right? While doubt is wrestling with what I believe. Come on, Bishop. Wow. Um, and I know that's caught liver all on Sunday morning, but we gotta digest it because disbelief is a decision. I am not going to believe. And doubt is I'm wrestling with it. I, I want to believe, but it's hard. And, and when I doubt, I want to believe, I just need somebody to help me. Uh, give me something, God, to go on. I, I want to believe what you're saying is true, but my record with you is that you lie. So I've run out of the benefit of the doubt. God, I can't hear nobody there, there was a man, I can back it up with scripture, in Mark chapter 9, whose son had become demon possessed. And he looks to Jesus and says, Lord, I believe. But you got to help me with my unbelief. Oh God. And I need us right where we are to shout it out loud. Lord, help me believe. Help me believe. I, I need God to help me. That the things from him that I want to pray for, I need you to help me believe because it's hard and I need you to help me believe. And some of us need to have a transparent moment because um, God, if, 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 if you help me believe it, then I can believe it. God, Lord, Lord, Lord help me. Help me believe, God, that, that you're going to heal every area of my body. Lord, I, I need you to help me believe that, that you can reconcile what, what has gone wrong in my family. Lord, I need you to help me believe that the worst is behind me and the best is yet to come. Lord, I need you to help me believe that you're still with me and your rod and your staff will comfort me. Lord, help me believe that in this season of my life, that everything that I pursue, I shall recover all. That doors are opening up for me right now. Lord, help me. And the 12 of y'all that are pity pat clapping, you ought to shout it out loud. Lord, help me believe. Lord, help me. Help me. God, help me believe. 
than the things on my prayer list. <sighs> we will come to pass. Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to help me to believe that in the time of trouble, you shall hide me. Lord, I need you to help me believe that while I'm praising you, the pain gonna leave my body. I need you to help me believe that we walk by faith. Come on here. And not by sight. I need you to help me. You know, the 25 of you who are right here with me, we, you need to have a transparent moment and say, Lord, I need you to help me. Help me recognize that as long as I keep you first, you're going to supply all of my needs. I need you to help me. Because what I'm looking at don't add up, but I need you to help me believe. And in my own personal transparent moment, I stumbled into Acts chapter 12. And um, um, King Herod has um, arrested Peter. And um, he has arrested Peter because um, King Herod has become full of himself. And according to verse number 2 of Acts chapter 12, he, he had gotten away with killing James brother of John. And Herod thought that he could deal with Pete the same way. Right, you know. And I came to tell y'all that old lying devil that just because you got away with some stuff with other people don't think that I'm going to let you wreck my life like that. There's something different on me. I've seen how you messed up other people's lives and, and made other people go crazy and compromise their beliefs. But it's not going to happen to me. Because God has something different planned for my life. And watch the text. Pete is arrested and put in prison with 16 soldiers. Um, and um, Peter is just one man, but he has 16 different entities assigned to him to try to keep him bound. God help me here, you know. And, and he has 16 soldiers and, read the text, has chains on. You know, and I need for us to understand that um that Satan, watch this, Satan has confidence in our ability to escape. Y'all are missing it. Um, maybe I should talk about this in a Wednesday night Bible school. But the devil um, that is attacking you has confidence enough in you uh, to know that you have the ability to get out of it. Uh, uh, come on, we're walking it. Um, and um, um, if he didn't think that you could make it, he wouldn't be piling so much on you. And some of us ought to be shouting right now. Why, Pastor? Because even the devil in hell knows that I am going to get to my destiny. Come on, child. That doors are opening for me. 
And if the devil believes it, here it is. Why don't you? Why don't you believe that you're getting ready to walk into a miracle? Get ready. I got to tell somebody that. Get ready to break out. Get ready to be healed. Get ready to be delivered. Get ready to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. I'm not just talking about it, but I'm getting ready to live it. Mm. Oh God, if you got enough faith, I want you to testify to somebody in your area. Just point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not just talking about it, but I'm getting ready to walk through the open door. I'm getting ready. into something watch the text with handcuffs he also has shackles on his feet and he has 16 other guards assigned to him I'm in verse number 5 of Acts chapter 12 and while Peter is stuck in a jail what happens, Pastor? The church started praying. Mm. Oh, God. Oh, God, be with us right here. And here's what I'm telling you right now. That when we pray today, somebody that you know that is wrapped up in something, something is getting ready to happen to give them here is your shout. An early release. Mm. Um. Somebody in your life, in your family, in your house is tied up in something. But God says, if I can find a church that still believes in the power of prayer that while we in church today somebody who you love is going to get set free and if you believe in the power of prayer I want you to open up your mouth right now and start praying for somebody Lord free them from the sickness free them from Depression, free them from anxiety, free them from a cycle of poverty, free them from a bad relationship, free them from making bad decisions. Whatever they are going through, if you pray right now and have no doubt that you know that God answers prayer. Open up your mouth and pray. Please touch somebody right now. Somewhere. Yeah. I'm right with you, Sean. I need us to pray for them. I shout you right here because Easter is not going to come with them still in bondage. And I got to pray, Sister Manfred, I got to pray like I know I have no doubt. I'm coming, Mother Walker. Mother Walker, I'm coming because you need to worship like there's no doubt in your that God can do anything. I, I need to hear you pray right there. Pray, 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 p
break, 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 break. The church is that break, 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 break. God is pulling them out right now. He's delivering them right now. God is making a way out of no way right now. Touch of God from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. I'm praying. I command you to be healed. I command you to be delivered. I command you to be set free. I command you to be healed. I command you to be delivered. I command you to be set free.
and immediately the shackles fell off. Don't, don't miss your shout, mom. But can I say to somebody who's watching right now, when you woke up this morning, the shackles that were on you last night, they fell off of you. And that's why we can praise God like this today. Because when you woke up, the shackles began to fall. And I'm talking to a few of you who, who felt heavy last night. But when you got up, for some reason, your feet got light. Has anybody beside me ever had a moment where you felt like your back was up against a wall? But in the middle of the night, God took the burden off of you. And somebody ought to declare it out loud. I, I don't have no doubt that I am getting ready to recover from something. And the good news of the gospel is that I don't even have to tell you what it is that I am recovering from. And all I need for you to do is to listen for the sound. Because when you hear me shout, it is the sound of chains falling. And I don't hear nobody shouting. It's, it's no way that you're going to be around me and hear silence because I got too much on me. And I need a few worshipers in here who, who've been carrying some dead weight. And I'm telling you right now, if you can give God glory, if you can open up your mouth and shout right now, the weight is going to drop off of you. If you praise him right now, watch the weight fall off of you. If you trust God, watch every chain fall off of you. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every Break every chain. that a miracle is getting ready to happen to you. I don't have no doubt. Hey, glory. I don't have no doubt. Sister Paul, since you turned around, I, I have no doubt that things are turning around for you. And I'm trying to move, but I have no doubt that God is making a way of his state. I just got a feeling, yeah, that everything, oh, is gonna be alright. Hey, woo, oh, glory. Would you lean over and tell somebody? I just got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. Be alright.
You ain't never been locked in nothing. Buddy. But if you ever been locked in something, and immediately, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh! 
open it up for your friends. Lift up your head and be lifted up and the king of glory. The king of glory. The king of glory. Listen, 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 listen. Can't you hear it? Somebody is knocking at the door. Why don't you let them in? Peace is at the door. Joy is at the door. Deliverance is at the door. Point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been waiting, I've been praying, and the favor that's on my life is going to open a door that I have not seen, ears have not heard, would take a step like you just walk into your door take a step yeah like I walked in to the door you just walked into a new anointing you just stepped into new favor, new joy, this joy, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away, lean over, point at your neighbor, and say it's open now. And say, my door just opened. Everything you've been through was to get you ready for that door. Yeah, every attack you had to fight was for that door. It's at the door. It's at the door. It's at the door. It's at the door. Your blessing is at the door. Your breakthrough is at the door. I dare you to start walking. Take a step, take a step. Put your point at three people and say, oh neighbor. It's time to walk through the door. Rise, shine, give God some glory. Rise, shine, give God.
want you to get it ready to see. Watch this. Today, God is going to answer one of your prayer requests. Today, if you don't doubt, but you get ready. If you don't doubt, I'm coming to you. If you don't doubt, but you're getting ready to see. Teacher, if you don't doubt, but you're getting ready to see. See, some of y'all missed it because without my glasses, I pointed them out. If you don't doubt, but you're getting ready to see. If you will praise him with no doubt.